So we're in Photoshop here. We've we've got Max running in the background, but I'm in Photoshop right now. And what I'm going to do is make a real basic uh, mask that we're going to use in uh, Max. I'm just going to go to File, New, and I'm going to make a uh, fairly rectangular image. When we're dealing with 3D, for the most part, we just need to deal with pixel size, so make sure pixels is selected. Don't use inches or you'll crash your computer. And our resolution can stay at 72 dots per inch. Max likes RGB color, so leaving it at RGB color in 8-bit is usually just fine. And uh, you can use these settings that I have right here. I'm going to hit OK, and here's my new image. There it is. Now I've got the background showing here, so those checkers may or may not be showing on your computer at home. Yours may look like that. If it does, that's just fine. What I want to do is I want to select black as my main color. Now if this little sw uh, swatch here isn't black, you can click on that and make it black. You can see 0, 0, 0 all the way down. And I have black. I'm going to fill this with black using the little paint bucket tool right here. And the paint bucket or gradient tool may be showing in this spot. You might have to hold the button down to get to it. Okay, I'm going to go to my paintbrush tool, this tool right here. I'm going to select a paintbrush, kind of a normal fuzzy brush here. Now you could use your Wacom tablet for this. I'm just going to be using my mouse. Using the square bracket tools on your keyboard, which, which are right next to the Enter and P key, I'm going to make my brush bigger and smaller. Smaller than that. And I'm going to write in, um, oops, not in black. I need to get white as my color. Or I could just hit this little arrow and switch them if you've got black and white showing. But I'm going to make sure white is my color. I'm going to write in mask, get the video right, there we go. So I've written in the word mask, and it's all in one layer. The white is what's going to be visible, and the black is what's going to fall away. Make sure your black is pure black and that your white is pure white. So with the white, make sure that you've got 255 right here and that your black is reading zeros right here. And that will make it work. Now I'm going to save this as, make sure I save it for you guys to use later so that it shows up. It's going to be saved as uh, mask01, and I'm going to save it as a targa. And you can use this one if you'd like. It's going to be 24 bits, not 32 bits. We're going to come back to that later. It's going to be 24 bits. Okay, I'm going to minimize this and open up Max. This file for 5013, which is your masking tutorial, is um, available in my folder, and you can open this up. I've got two objects here. I've got a plane and a window. I'm going to grab the entire window object and hide that one for now. And I'll just deal with this plane. Now to apply the mask, we go to our material editor. Scoot this guy over. And any blank shader, we go under maps, opacity, where it says none, since we're using a bitmap in this case as our mask, I'm going to double click bitmap. I'm going to go find my bitmap, which you can find this in my folder, or if you just made one, you can use that. And it's mask, where's mask, there we go. Okay. And you can see that it's masked out here in the background. It's masked out everything except for my writing. If you can't see it very clearly, you can actually use this little checker button and right-click on this and say drag, rotate, and you can see that I've just got the word mask showing up there.
Okay? When you're done with drag rotate, you can go over to drag copy. So I right clicked and said drag copy. I'm going to drag this over to my plane and I'm going to hit my little show map and viewport. There's my mask. And now if I render this, You'll see, since I have a black background, we really can't tell if it's working or not. So we need to change our background. To do that, I go to Rendering, Environment, Background Color. I'm going to make it something real obvious. How about green? That's good. Now my background color is going to be this bright green. And when I render this, you'll see that we're just seeing the word mask. We're not seeing the whole... Um, piece. And if I put this shader back on and we render it, you'll see that's the entire plane. Now if I drag my masked piece back over, that's what it looks like when it's masked. So using masks can be really helpful um, when you're doing things like windows, glass, plastic, anything that's see-through. We're going to do decals in the next video, so you'll see how to do that. But let's go back to this idea of the see-through objects. I'm going to right clear, click on this and say unhide all. And I'm going to get my little um, window back here and I'm going to hide that. So I've got this window piece. And if I render this, you'll see I've got a window pane here, which is a separate object. I'm not going to do anything to that. But this green piece back here, is what I'm going to mask out. So when we worked before in, in Photoshop, we were pretty much just making up the map to apply to our object. In this case, we need a specifically sized map so that we can really see what it is we're trying to match. I want a little bit of grime kind of stuck around the sides of this window, like right around in there but I have to kind of have a template to start with. And the way we do that is we'll go to our four views here, right click on the front viewport and we'll maximize that. I'm gonna hit the print screen button on my keyboard which is usually right above the backspace key. That's going to print a screenshot of Max into my uh, clipboard. Go back to Photoshop, I'm gonna close this. And I'm going to go to File, New. Photoshop knows there's something in the clipboard, so it's actually made the size correct at this point. All you need to do is hit OK. And then Edit, Paste. And there's my Mac screen. Now, I can go over to Crop. I'm going to crop out the green line, which is my green plane, or at least get close, it doesn't have to be exact, and hit Enter. And now I have a little template that I can use to make my mask with. I'm going to go make a new layer in Photoshop by hitting this little button here, New Layer. Here's my new layer. And I'm going to fill that new layer with black. So if you need to pick black, there's your zeros right there. I'm going to fill that with black. And then I'm going to knock the fill amount down on that layer just so I can see through a little bit. Hopefully that's showing up on the video. But there's a little cross piece here, and that's my window pane. I'm going to go to a new layer. And I'm going to then paint with white. Now again, you can use your Wacom tablet for this. Mine isn't plugged in right now, so I'm going to use my um, mouse. But I would rather use my Wacom tablet. And using a bigger brush. Remember, I'm in a new layer right now. So I'm going to kind of pad in. I'm clicking a lot here to make this grimy part that's going to go around the window and it's not going to look like much like grime for the time being. That's okay because we have a few tricks we can use. Now I'm going to go up here to filter, go to blur and Gaussian blur. 
and I'm going to set this pretty high. You can see we want something like, eh, like that. And that happened to be 18.7 if you're doing it on the same thing as I am. There we go. Now, I'm going to go back down to my black layer, and I'm going to knock the fill back up to 100%. So we shouldn't see any of the window pane now because we just need a mask. And you can save this as a Photoshop file if you want, or you can flatten the entire image and save it. I'm going to save this as a Targa. And we'll call this mask, where's my old mask? Mask 02. And I'll hit save. Again, it's going to be 24 bits. Minimize this. Go back over to max. I'm going to go to my four views here and hop back out to my perspective view for this. Go to my material editor. Pick a new clean uh, blank shader. Go to maps. Opacity. Bitmap. Find the new one, which is mass 2. My window here is made up of two pieces. There's an outside piece and an inside piece. Click on the inside piece, which in mine is green. And I'm going to color that a gray color so that the grime will show up as gray, not green. We don't need it to be mossy. We just need it to be grimy. I'm going to drag this over. I'm going to hit the view in my viewport to see if it fits. And you can see because we made that template, we're pretty close to it fitting. And now if I render this, you can see that we can see through some of the window, but not all of it. And we have this grime back here. And that grime is our mask. I'll render it again real quick. Um, if we had a background back here, this grimy part would be covering up part of the window and it looks like somebody's just washed the middle part of the window. Okay? So keep that in mind. If you're doing anything that has see-through pieces, you probably don't want the see-through part to be entirely see-through because it'll look, it won't look that great. This also works for things like banisters. It'll work for grill pieces. Small little filters or grates will work this way. So keep in mind that you can use these uh, masks for just about anything.